Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are in our Lenten sermon series where we're looking at the way, uh, looking at some of these major themes in the Gospel of John and how we all long for these themes. So like, for example, one of the themes we talked about a few weeks ago was the theme of love, how we all long to love others and we all long to be loved by others. Yet as we experience love in the world, we experience it in a very broken way. We experience it in a way where oftentimes our hearts are broken or we hurt other people even though we intend to love them. Yet Jesus is the way, right? And he shows us what true love is as he is love, as he lays down his life for his friends, for you and me. So this week's theme, if you haven't picked up on it from the song we just sang or the children's message or the readings, this week's theme is freedom. Right? Everybody like freedom? Yeah, right. When I think of freedom, I should have put this up there as a meme. I, I think of Mel Gibson and the war paint in Braveheart, right? Leading his army, right? He's like, freedom, right? Anybody, anybody think of that? Maybe that's just my generation, but, but that's what I think of, right? And we all look forward to freedom, right? Everybody, right? We look forward to July 4th, right? Independence Day. We celebrate freedom in our country. We, we love this idea of freedom, and our God is a God that is a God of freedom. If you look throughout the scriptures, you see how, how God liberates his people and he frees his people. When he created Adam and Eve, he created them to be in the Garden of Eden with him where they were free to be stewards of the garden, to care for all the rest of creation, to, to name all the things in creation and, and serve the rest of creation. They were free. Right Later on, in the, in the book of Genesis, towards the end of the book of Genesis, we have Joseph, who's sold into slavery by his good-for-nothing brothers, but God intended it for good, because God rescued Joseph out of slavery, and there was a great famine that was going to be across all the lands, and then God used Joseph and his skills to basically be able to provide for all the nations around him. God enabled Joseph to use his freedom to truly care for those around him and even serve his brothers who had sold him into slavery. After that, right, we have the book of Exodus, and Abby talked about that in the children's message. It's kind of our Lenten theme for our midweek, right, where God's people found themselves enslaved in Egypt, but God came to Moses in the murdering bush, and he brought all the plagues, and God rescued his people and liberated them through the Red Sea as they were delivered from the hand of Pharaoh to freedom. Later on in the Old Testament, we find that God's people are basically enslaved by Babylon, and God works through Cyrus of Persia to issue a decree that God's people are able to go back home where they rebuild the temple and in freedom they rebuild the wall and get back kind of to the, the law, to the way of God. We see this major theme of freedom all throughout the scriptures. We also see it in the Gospel of John. In fact, Jesus picks up on this theme of freedom and this is what Jesus says in our Gospel lesson in John chapter 8. So, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right? That's pretty good, right? If you abide, if you remain in the words of Jesus and his word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right? Does that sound good, right? Knowing the truth and being freed in Jesus? Like, I think that's, that's really good for us, but what does Jesus mean here? Right, what is Jesus talking about? Because I think if I ask you what you think freedom means, and I tell you what I think freedom means, and you ask somebody over there what they think freedom means, you might mean something different. So let's look at the context here, right? So Jesus says, if you abide in my word, you are, my, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Look how the Jews respond to him. Look at this. This is, this is kind of funny, actually. They answered him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Right, this is funny. Do you pick up on the irony? Because what, what do the Jews say? We've never been slaves to anybody. What is the history of God's people in the Old Testament? 
right? What are they constantly having to overcome? They're slaves, right? And then God delivers them and God rescues them, right? Right? Think the Exodus, right? They're slaves in Egypt and God has to come and deliver them and rescue them, right? Think Babylon, right? God has to come and ultimately deliver them and rescue them. And then living in the day of Jesus, who's the, the, big, the big group in town, right? Who's in charge? Is it the Jewish people? No, who is it? Rome, right? And what were the Jewish people waiting for the Messiah to come and do? Free them from Rome, right? Rescue them out of Rome. And yet, what do the Jewish people tell Jesus? What do you mean we'll be free in you? We don't need to be free. We're already, be, we're already free. We've never been enslaved to anybody. What? Right? <laughs> They have a history of being enslaved to people, yet they don't see how they're enslaved. And I think many times that's what happens to us. I think many times we say, oh, we live in a free country. We're free to do whatever we want. And we don't actually see that we're enslaved. Maybe you can think um, to the buddy you had in high school right, or the friends you had in high school, right, and they, they had a, a pretty strict household growing up, and then they got off to college, and they experienced, like, the Mel Gibson freedom, right, and what do they do as soon as they get off to college? They, they, they went off like the prodigal son, right, they, they went off like the lost son, and they, they enjoyed their freedom, but what did they become a slave to? Those passions, those lusts, those idols, Right before you knew it, they thought they were experiencing freedom, but in reality, they were becoming enslaved to that idol they were so lusting after. And you may be saying, well, that's why they, you know, that's why they didn't quite make it, right? That, that's why they had too much freedom. They enjoyed it a little bit too much. And it's really easy to point out other people, go, oh man, yeah, yeah, so and so or so and so's kids, look what they did. But I think it's true in our lives too. But I wasn't a real wild person growing up, right? I, I was pretty mellow. Uh, but I can remember when I got to college, right? I experienced freedom. But for me, it wasn't anything horrible or wild. For me, it was the freedom to eat whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted, right? So Oreos at midnight, yes, the whole box, right? Ice cream for breakfast, why not, right? And before you know it, you know, everybody talks about the freshman 15. I think I put on like the freshman 45. I had become a slave, basically, to being able to eat whenever I wanted to. But in reality, as you experience freedom, as you're able to do whatever you want to, as you're able to pursue your idols, what do you become a slave to? Where do you think you're free, but you're actually trapped and slavery. Like I said, it's really easy to point out to everybody else's problems, but, but where is that for you in your life? Where is that for you this morning? Because Jesus here continues, he kind of calls it out on that. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin, right? And so many times we don't see it, right? And, and we just said it in the liturgy this morning, right? John also writes this in, in, his, in one of his letters later on in the Bible, right? He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Anybody heard that one before? Right? If, I think it kind of goes along with this, but what else does he say? But if we confess our sins, right? God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So where is that, that, that you're a slave in your life? Where is that that you need to confess to God and say, man, yeah, I, I'm, I'm lusting after this thing, and I've become a slave to the thing. I'm, I think I'm free. I think I can do whatever I want, but I've actually curled in on myself, away from loving my God and away from loving my neighbor. I've, I've gone after my own selfish desires and passions. And if you say, oh, I'm free, right, I can do whatever I want, it doesn't work that way. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But God calls us to confess to him. God calls us to turn back to Jesus and confess our sins, for he is faithful and just and will forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Right, and that's what Jesus does for us. Right, Jesus goes to the cross and he dies and he rises to free us of our sin, to free us of those passions, of those times we, we, we can't experience that freedom. And, and, he, and he, he does that. 
And the interesting thing about the, the Jewish people that are kind of he's dealing with right here is they, they don't see it. Right? This, this is what they say, basically. So if, um, um, uh, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. They were so passionate about their freedom, about doing whatever they wanted. They were seeking to kill the Messiah. They were seeking to kill Jesus. Where is that in your life? Where, where does that get in your way of following Jesus? And if you continue just a little bit later in John chapter 8, they answered him, well, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did, but now you seek to kill me? A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God, this is not what Abraham did. He says, you guys are claiming you're living in the freedom of Abraham, but you're not actually doing that. You guys are a slave to your sin. Do you remember what Abraham did? I don't know if this is what Jesus was thinking about, but when I was thinking about this and listening to these words of Jesus here, Right, the thing that I thought of that Abraham did. Do you remember his um, his relative Lot, Abraham and Lot? This is like um, I have a children's Bible. I read with my my kids every every night at night, and we had Abraham and Lot the other. It's a it's a weird story, right? It's children's Bibles. It's weird in children's Bibles too. And, and so Abraham and Lot, right? They have this dispute over. They all have big herds and they have big livestock, and they kind of get in an argument over it about where they're grazing. You know, each of them eating their each other's grazing land. So what does Abraham do? Abraham says, Lot, you go ahead, right? Go wherever you want. Take your animals wherever you want. I'll go the other direction. He gives him the freedom to do whatever he wants to do. And what does Lot do with that freedom? He gets himself into some trouble, right? Long story short, he kind of rubs up against a couple kings the wrong way. He gets himself into some trouble. And how does Abraham respond to that? Does Abraham look at Lot and say, ha ha, no, 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 boo, but look at all the trouble you got at God's ah, coming for you, right? Is that what he does? No, what does Abraham do? Abraham goes and he rescues Lot. He basically goes and he serves Lot. And that's exactly what Jesus does for the Jews that he's talking to here and for you and for me. Right? Jesus isn't looking at you saying, oh man, look at the mess you got yourself into with that freedom. No, Jesus goes to serve you and love you, and he suffers and he dies for you, and he rises for you, that you might be free. That that thing that, that, that is holding you so tight, that, it, that is actually holding you captive, your very own sin is released as you are forgiven and set free. And you're set free for a purpose. You're set free to serve those and love those around you. The very end of the Gospel of John, I love the end of the Gospel of John, and everything kind of builds up to this in the Gospel of John. We've kind of talked about this a couple times already this month. But you have Peter, right? And Peter was the disciple who didn't use his freedom well, right? He was free to deny Jesus, and he did that to basically probably save his own skin, he denied him three times, and of course Jesus dies and rises. Peter's messed up. He's used his freedom all wrong. Yet Jesus comes to him and says, hey, they're sitting on the beach, the very end of the Gospel of John. Hey, Peter, do you love me? And he goes, yeah, Lord, you know, you know I love you. And Jesus says, well, go feed my lambs, tend my sheep. He does this three different times. I've got a purpose for you as you've been set free to go love and to serve as I've freed you from your sin. God has a purpose for you as he's freed you from your sin to use that freedom to go love and serve those around you. So live in that freedom and follow that same service that Christ has shown you. For you are free. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we'll take